Welcome, everybody, to Not Conscious. Chris, how you doing, buddy? Good, sir. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are you? I am doing well. I am very excited today. W- really? Yes. Stop Can't it. Look at my nipples. <laughs> Sicko. <laughs> We're very excited. We have a gentleman named Tony. Tony. Tell us where he's from, sir. Tony Bag of Donuts. Tony Bag of Donuts. Tony from- Rack of Lamb. Britannia. Oh, Tony from MJ News Digest. Yes. And Mark, how did we meet Tony? Well, how we met Tony is we were very fortunate to have a conversation with Taj Jackson, Michael Jackson's nephew. Yes. And it was a very great conversation. And somehow I think it got onto Tony's radar because next thing you know, you and I were showcased on his YouTube channel. Crazy. And then uh, we reached out, of course, and then we started a bromance. And You started a bromance. Yes. I'm kind of like the third wheel. Well, which is okay. I'm, I accept that role. You're like the third, fourth, and fifth wheel. <laughs> all you're, the wheels. You're all the wheels. Okay. But um, our bromance, first of all, we wanted to have Mon because we, you and I both know that having a person with a British accent instantaneously legitimizes the oh, podcast. Oh, yeah. It's super smart. So we're really happy about that. Yes. Um, Tony, are you over there? I, I'm here, yes. How are you? How, is my English accent uh, good enough for you? We love it. We're absolutely in love with it. How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm I'm very well. Awesome. Well, this is the first time we've ever spoken, so welcome to our show. Um, we were so honored that we had been on yours a couple times. So thank you for showcasing us. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm I'm equally as honored to be here. You guys are great. So tell us a little bit about your uh, your channel and your podcast. Well, it's called MJ News Digest, and I cover all the latest Michael Jackson news. How did how is it you came about uh, doing that as as your passion or your uh, interest? Well, I, I guess no one else was really doing it at the time, and it was just after Leaving Neverland came out. So there was a lot of bullshit about Michael Jackson uh, in the press and on the internet. The press was slaughtering uh, his legacy, and I kind of wanted to do something about that. Uh, in what in whichever little way that i could yeah i feel like you've done such a great job because i'm one of those people quote unquote guilty of having a really strong anti-michael opinion coming out of neverland right yeah. uh the hbo documentary and then i got in touch with jess garcia of course whom we both know the and guy. uh she showed me square one on Thanks, amazon man. and it completely changed my i mean it, it just the facts can't be denied yeah so um Tell us a little bit about your channel, what what you cover besides like, you know, what about MJ you cover or how you get your articles and how you get your information. Oh, that's a secret. I can't I can't divulge <laughs> my secret, can I? What can you tell us? <laughs> OK, that's a that's a good secret. So what's one of what's one of those interesting things that you've ever uh, pulled out like information wise about Michael or about the whole the whole thing, the 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 you know, the uh, media against him and the people that are for him and everything. What's one of the most interesting uh subjects you found well i think what's interesting is seeing how the press are the negative bias is is definitely changing and there's more positive articles about uh michael jackson at the moment which is good but we have leaving neverland 2 coming around the corner so uh it's all gonna kick off again i think so Uh, is that an is that gonna again be on hbo no idea no idea but uh yeah the director is was filming in america recently is it the same guy? Yes, yeah, and the same uh, uh, fuckwits, Wade and James. Do you, do you want to dox that son of a bitch? Do I want to what? <laughs> do you want to dox that son of a bitch? Just give us this guy's name. Uh, who, the director? Yes. I'm not, no, I'm not sharing his name. Okay. Did that's... you say fuckwits? Yes. I, uh, dude, Is that's that allowed? My... Yes, I yes, I approve that so hard, and that's my new favorite expression. Oh my goodness. Fuckwit sounds way better than the other one because I can't say the R word. Oh, what a fuckwit. I like fuckwit. I, I do I do too. I love it. What's the it's R word? Like a, What's the R word? Uh, the R word is uh it starts with a re and ends with four other letters that I can't say because okay. Megzy will it's, I'm gonna say it. It's retarded. Okay. Which is in America, yeah, that's that. no longer appropriate. Yes, no. it's no longer approved. And it's not, it's funny because we don't mean it the way in a derogatory manner. No, yeah. we mean so. it in a way of like, hey, that was really dumb. Don't do that again. Yeah. But people take it too seriously and it is what it is. You know how that so is. So now right? it's fuck wit. Fuck I like it. It's going to be wit. fuck witted, <laughs> fuck witting, so, et cetera. <laughs> so I listened to your latest episode. Uh, I think it was released on December 16th. And uh, 
we're Americans, so we say like what, where, and not like what and where. I don't say and, that. Do I? What? Where? I, I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I heard. I heard you say HBO, and HBO. I thought that was amazing. How do you say yeah. HBO? HBO. Just H. H. Like just without the huh part, we just okay. go HBO. But HBO. yeah, I found that interesting. It's just a verbal thing that I like to discuss so tony you're on with us it's your time you want to talk about some crazy stuff there's some crazy shit going on in europe right now and in well in britain in the uk specifically right yes with covid yes tell us about it well boris johnson i guess you've heard of him he's our esteemed leader yeah esteemed leader i like that well both him and his gaggle of cunts have cancelled christmas uh, effectively for the whole of uk and i'm really pissed off about it it effectively means that on, on Christmas Day, I was going to spend the afternoon with a friend. I can't do that because I'm not allowed by law to leave my home. Uh, she can't come over to mine. On Boxing Day, I was going to spend the afternoon with a hot guy, but I can't do that because he's in Tier 2, I'm in Tier 4, and Tier 4 and Tier 2 aren't allowed to mix. So, fuck off, Boris. I'm what's really a, pissed what off about tier? it. Yeah, what, we need to know about this tier what's thing. What's Okay, so there was, Boris announced maybe about six months ago um, that there was going to be, or maybe three months ago, three tiers. So tier one, tier two, tier three, and tier three was the highest level. So shops would still be open. Uh, you could still go to work if it was an essential job, if you're an essential key worker. Um, and you could still invite one other person uh, to your home and uh, kind of mingle with six others outside. But at four o'clock yesterday, uh, he announced tier four. Uh, which just locks everyone in London and the southeast down. Uh, so it means that we can't uh, spend Christmas with our loved ones. Uh, and is that really on much. Christmas and Boxing Day or before that? That's from four o'clock yesterday uh, for the, I think oh. the next 14 days. Although he is given uh, Christmas Day off. He's giving COVID Christmas Day, day off for everyone in Tier <laughs> 1, 2 and 3, but not tier, not tier 4. So COVID doesn't have to do any work on Christmas Day? No, uh, COVID isn't allowed to kill anyone on Christmas Day. Okay, good. that's good to know. That's but what, so, nice. what if you have to go get food? Are you uh, allowed to leave? Yeah, I can. I can buy essential items. Whatever. Okay, so you can't, but you can't go to a a gathering. You can go get. Hey, I need some spinach. That's okay. Yeah, that's essential. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, but in the or, UK, or, there or, are no there are no shops open on Christmas Day. So, but like, so today's the twentieth of December. On the twenty third, if you need gin. You're allowed to buy that. Yes. Because that's essential in my book. Yes, it is. Okay. Excellent. But not I, on Christmas. I can trump that because Pennsylvania. Uh-oh. Pennsylvania, I don't know if you're familiar with this, Tony, but uh, in the United States, some of, this, some of the states themselves are the actual purveyors of alcohol, hard liquor, for example. In Arizona, where we live, we can buy booze at a supermarket, but we can't. But in Pennsylvania, it's actually at a state store. Pennsylvania is the largest single purchaser of alcohol in the United wow. States. And what it was, they actually shut down alcohol sales the day of th- uh, uh for like a day or two before Thanksgiving. So people wouldn't get all like crazy. And Not, approved. Right. Not approved. That's when you need it most. Right. When your yeah. aunt comes to town and annoys the shit out of you. <laughs> so how do you, so you have different tiers per the region now. So each region's now broken into its severity level or how does that work with the tier two mixing with a tier four? It sounds almost like uh, segregation. Well, it is. Um, we're not allowed to mix. So, for example, uh, Worthing and Brighton, I think they're tier two. Uh, Hastings and East Sussex and London and the rest of the southeast are tier four. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know where the border is. I don't even know if there's army on the border to, you know, kill us all if we tr- if we try to cross over. But it's just absolutely crazy. Are they doing car checks and things like that? Uh, I haven't seen like, any any locally, but I've seen Facebook videos. Whether they're true or not, I don't know. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So, what are your feelings about this? I mean, you you live there. How impacted are you personally, and and just as a as a citizen of the UK of a free you know a free society? Well, it doesn't feel like a free society, and it, I think that's where we're heading. Unfortunately, yeah, I have that. I have a little bit of a weird opinion because I'm a conspiracy theorist and. Oh, I love a shock. A conspiracy. <laughs> oh, well, shit. you know, it's, I, I'll be honest. I feel like they're pushing us to our brink to see where we're where we'll finally push back. That's if that makes sense, yeah. just to see how far they can do it for next time. And I know that sounds very controlling or whatnot, but it it feels that way to me. This does feel like it's a prelude to something a lot bigger. 
It's kind of like a dress rehearsal. Yeah. Hmm. It's interesting. And I'm curious how that, how that works. Cause so my understanding is, is your main election next year? I've got no idea. I, oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. sure. Cause I thought it was a year apart, right? Cause we watched something about. Yeah. UK in, it's odd years, correct? I don't know. Isn't that oh. awful? Oh, yeah. I, I, no, I, not I, kind of, I kind of grew up in a non-political family and I was kind of led to believe not to follow politics and I kind of haven't. Uh, but as an adult recently, I've started to uh, follow it briefly. But yeah, I don't really know about elections. Sometimes I vote, I, sometimes I don't. It's terrible. I wish I didn't. I applaud that, I sir. wish I was like you, sir, because that is awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can't get away from having a conversation about car oil motor oil without yeah. like it becoming political it's terrible you know mm. so re regarding what you're saying with the tears and uh not being able to see friends etc what's the people that you interact with and the people in your town in your city what's their feeling what's the mood of the people they're pissed off we've, we've all had enough to be honest this has been going on since march like we've had, we had a, a national lockdown uh, and then after that we kind of went into these tears that didn't really work then we had another lockdown which didn't work and now we're back onto these tears again and so I, what's I, kind of, I, I can't sorry i kind of get the the idea that like the vaccine was rolled out in in the uk i think it was the first country in the world to get this vaccine the savior uh, of everybody and it, i kind of feel that not enough people are, are taking the vaccine and so now they're saying there's a new strain of COVID that's been identified in the UK. Uh, it's probably a lot more deadly, but the vaccine is still going to work. So it kind of feels that this tier tier four, this Christmas lockdown is to try to get us to have this vaccine. Yeah, I've got a little we've got some feelings on that. Uh, what are your thoughts on the vaccine itself? Are you a little skeptical of the, the you know, how quickly it came out or how well people collaborated to make these things or? Yeah, I am. I am uh, suspicious about it. I'm not anti-vax. Uh, I'm more pro common sense, I think. And I, I, I have been offered the vaccine. I work in health and social care and I've refused to have it um, until they make it mandatory. Um, and then they're going to have a fight on their hands for me to have it. I love pro common sense. Thank you. That's an amazing expression. We've got fuck wit, fuck wit and, and pro, pro common, common sense. sense. I have to write these down. Yeah, no anti-vax, but pro common sense. Yes, smart to me. Yes, you know, I, I, so you work in the healthcare field. Not not to get too specific, because I'm not to share too much of your personal stuff. But uh, in what what capacity would you say you work in healthcare? Do you work with patients, or do you work in a administrative role? Or uh, well, it's health and uh, health and social care, so it's mental health. Oh, mental okay. health. Okay. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. I, how, how did you get into mental health? I mean, it sounds like you're for, for being a non-political person, you seem to have a lot of amazing, um, you know, you're being a champion for a lot of people that are being, I don't know, overlooked, stepped down on, or, or, you know, well, as in, disregarded as, as in working in mental health. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess that's, that's true. Um, so I started in mental health in 2011. Um, I have two daughters and one of my daughters, uh, we're estranged, but one of my daughters uh, came to live with me for a while. And I didn't realize at the time that she had mental health issues and I was really unequipped to deal with uh, those. Um, I had my own kind of mental health issues, but they weren't diagnosed at that time. Um, so when she went back to like her home after staying with me, I, I decided I wanted to work in mental health. I couldn't help her, but maybe I can, I can help someone else. Um, so yeah, so I started in, uh, mental health in like a residential home. It wasn't a care home. It's more about supporting people to gain their independence, um, and move on into the community. Uh, from there, I became a manager of a supported accommodation, uh, mental health project, um, I then left there to set myself up as a life coach, but I'm now going back into uh, mental health uh, management and I'm really excited about it. I can't wait. Well, congratulations. Did you did you already take a position or are you interviewing or how's that working? Yeah. So, I've yeah, I got the position. The interview was oh, really nice. bad. It was the worst interview, honestly, in the world. But somehow I got the job and I start next year. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Congratulations. That's amazing. Yeah. Do you want to share the company or anything about that so that everyone knows to, to come uh, to Tony to get some help? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No. I think they're quite, um, 
They don't like swear words. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh well, fair enough. Have to be careful. Okay, we got how, you. So how does how does a fuckwit like yourself uh, uh, <laughs> how do you how do you censor yourself in front of people? No. <laughs> Did you just call me a fuckwit? No, I I would never do that, sir. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> That's your fault. You gave us the word. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there anything else uh, you want to get off your chest about the COVID, or anything else you want to share about? Um, any anything about yourself or how you got to where you're at just where do you think this is going to end what what is covid all about <clears throat> what's the end yeah. goal what what do you think is the end goal for this uh do you really want my opinion because yeah. i'm weird ah, sure. <laughs> here we go conspiracy chris, theories chris would you like to share yours first do you have an uh, opinion sure about i'll it? go uh i think it's all about fear and control and power yeah. And, yeah. and manipulation and but to, I, what, to what end though I don't know. I, I don't. I, I that's that's the that is the key question, and I don't know what the end goal is. And perhaps Mark is right to see how far the powers that be, whether it be a government, whether it's you know the the British government, the United, the U.S. government, whether Chinese government, whatever, or whether it's the pharmaceutical companies or. A, a conglomeration of of many, whether it's those those as well, and to see how much control they can exert on the world population, I, I don't know the end goal. Uh, maybe it is to give us the vaccine, which people are saying are not exactly good for you. I, I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Anything else, Chris? Uh. B or subsection two, I refuse to live my life in fear. And excellent, I've, excellent. I've said that since March 16th when I started working from home that I continue to golf frequently. I do wear my mask where I have to because it is a city ordinance depending upon what city I'm in. Like if, um, you know, we, we live in a major metropolitan area and there's many suburbs that are attached. So one city has ordinance a and one city has ordinance b except something to that effect so where i have to wear my mask i do i don't want to but i do and i re but i refuse to i see my friends and if i get covid i get covid i i, I and i think i'll i think i'll i had the swine flu in 09 and i okay. it was it sucked and i was down for seven days on the couch and it was horrible but i i'm gonna be okay you know yeah, and I refuse to live my life in fear. Do you know? Do you know anyone who's had COVID? Uh yes. Um, we both have, I think. Uh, my my direct family back home in Philadelphia. My nie there's three generations living in a, on one household right now. My niece, my brother, and my parents. And my niece was diagnosed with it. My dad was deathly ill over Thanksgiving. I think that's what it was. Right. And my mom just got over being ill and she said she would take 10 steps and then feel like completely wiped i have a feeling she got as well considering the niece was diagnosed as well my mm -hmm. parents are in their 70s high 70s and low 80s so what's the testing kind of like regime uh, over there are you tested frequently or doesn't sound like you are it's completely up to you uh unless you're not at all actually or, well unless your job mandates it like oh, my okay. job does not so i've never been tested uh, because there's no reason for me to be tested. So How, how's the testing in the UK? Tell us about that's that. A better question. That, that sounds really interesting because we we don't have it unless you go in voluntarily or or you have or to. You have to. Yeah, it's pretty much the same here. I, I'm not sure if we can go in voluntarily, but if your job kind of if you're an essential worker or you work in healthcare, uh, then you then you get the um, the test and we're tested weekly. Um, there are testing facilities that have opened up all around the country. Um, I'm not quite sure how how, how they work, uh, but interestingly, there's uh, loads of videos and photos of these test centres just being desolate. There's like no one attending uh, attending to them, so I don't know. Uh, but I, I do also know of people that have stuck a, uh, the test in a pomegranate, and um, it's they've received a positive result. So the whole thing is just it's just bizarre. I've heard of that as well. I've heard of. Uh, somebody tested a mango that and okay. tested positive. I've heard of somebody that a nurse sent a test back unopened and it came back positive. Wow. 
So, and the nurse told this to a friend of mine. So this is secondhand. This is not like, oh, I read it on 47 websites that was so far down a rabbit hole on the cyber interwebs, right? This was a good friend of mine was told this by a registered nurse. Wow. So how much validity does that have? And how are you not into conspiracies, Chris, if you know this kind of stuff? Well, uh, I, it's, I am because it's Mark's fault. Common sense. Yes, yeah. I'm pro common We're sense. Pro common sense. So, sir. And, and, and Mark and I, I question everything since I was a kid. And that's the problem is that, but I was squashed like, hey, why is, why is the sky do this? Don't ask that question. Well, why can't I ask that question? So, of course, but it has to have logic to it, right? It has to be like, okay, well, why is this? Okay, well, well then why is that? So it, it has to be, there has to be some logic. And then when I heard the mango thing, and then they, now you say pomegranate, I mean, it's at this point, pick a fruit, <laughs> you know? That's amazing. So I, if I may, uh, it's my opinion that, I'll, Tony, do you really want me to start at like the beginning of the Wuhan and everything, just where, where, yeah. I, where my mind is, yeah. as common okay. sense as it can be? How okay. much time do you have, Tony? So <laughs> I have a nice sprinkle of a common sense with a little conspiracy. Oh, That's, God. So Here it's my go. opinion that the virus was being te uh, examined and studied at this really shoddy uh, biochemical yeah, thing in Wuhan. Right. Because they had really they had really bad ratings before. They had clean cleanliness issues. and Like on all, Yelp, they had thumbs down and stuff they, like they, that? In China, Yelp, yes. Oh, China, Yelp. Yelp. <laughs> <laughs> on shelf it was uh they had thumbs down so what happens is when you study these types of things and i don't know if you're familiar with a gentleman named brett weinstein but right. he's actually a uh, bio he's the guy up in oregon that was evergreen college or was an evergreen college thing with some social justice stuff maybe about five years ago he was part of that but he's a very intelligent man and he it's his opinion and i i echo it that uh they were working with it and testing it because they do that you know we we do have bio labs around. We have a CDC in Atlanta that deals with all these nasty things. And I think they got it to the point. Center for Disease Control. Sa thank you. Center you for go. Disease We're, Control, continue. the CDC uh, in the United States. I think it just um, they had advanced it to where it could go from Passover to humans from animal. And then it got out. I don't think it was malicious, but I do think it was manipulated, if that makes sense. Okay. So that's my, my opinion on how it got out. After that, though, remember 100 years ago, we had the Spanish flu, right? But yeah. we didn't have technology like we do today with all the internet and all that stuff. So that was more of a management thing. What, 50% of people died, was it? Or 33%? 33%. Wow. It was a huge number, right? Well, it's my opinion that this happened. However, now people are looking to take advantage of it as it's happened. I don't think they created it to start manipulating, yeah. but I think they're taking advantage of it being what it is, right? It's a brilliant opportunity to control a, a whole species of people. That's, that's what's happening. Yeah, it's like a thought experiment. Yes. It's like what can it, – it does feel that way. And have you – are you uh, – in, in the UK, have you talked about removing currency and going to a digital form only? Have you discussed that at all? Uh, there, yeah, there has been some discussion and like locally in shops, especially during the first lockdown, there were signs saying that uh, the vendors wouldn't take cash, would only take uh, like chip and pin. I don't know if you have that in America um, or like the card. We, we do. do. Yes. Well, and when you say, Mark, when you I, I need to I have a question about your question. When you say digital, do you mean no credit cards as well? Like pay with your phone? Yes. Or so, what do you mean? Uh, so a uh, from what I've I've read some other things about our government and what we're seeing is we're we're now supposedly have a digital wallet associated with our social security number. Oh, my God. For real. The what what they're stating is that the you know, currency is physical. Right. So you get germs on the money and then you hand the money off. Right. They're saying the claim they I'm sorry. I hate I hate the they and them. You mean and the aliens? That, but, <laughs> the claim is that the money can spread germs. So let's get rid of money. However, where, how do you get money then? It would have to be a centralized place. It's now married to your social security number. You are now indebted to the government because they will have all of your money, all of but your is funds. That you could pay with a debit or credit card or is it? I would think it's all through a phone system and you could have a credit system. So wait a minute. Is it cashless or is it? 
It's cashless. So you would still use a debit and, or, and credit card tied to your own bank account? My or is it a centralized one bank? Well, for, for the actual payments, everything's going to be married to your social security number. That's the general goal. Okay, that's probably down the line though. Right, but that's dangerous, but, right? Right, but the first step is to get go cashless. Yeah, Tony, we what are your already thoughts going, on We're like? already going that way, but right. go ahead, Tony, what is your thought on that? It kind of sounds like we're heading towards what's going on in China with their, is it the social credit system? Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind not of, aware, what is that? Uh, basically, if you kind of like behave, uh, you're, um, you're allowed certain access to areas. If you don't behave, then you can't go to certain shops and things like that. Right. It's kind of like, a, one, sorry. Go ahead, Tony. Sorry. Uh, it just kind of sounds very s similar. Or it kind of sounds yeah. like we're heading towards that. And in the UK, I saw yesterday, uh, the government uh, proposing to bring out, there's a bill that's gone through, health passports. So on this health passport for all the citizens, uh, it will say whether we've had a vaccination. And if we haven't, we won't be allowed into certain sports arenas or concert uh, venues. Yeah, it's, that sounds just a little scary to me. Yeah, it is. So with that digital wallet thing, it's the same thing. It's, it's your ultimate way of control. The United States has a very... It's, it's very interesting because there's a lot of cash system. A lot of people work under the table still in the United States or they're trying to make ends meet, right? And they work a side job. Those things would be eliminated if we go to a digital system because cash will no longer be a thing, right? Yeah. How, how the heck could we possibly um, not, you know, it's ultimate control because all they do is shut off your, your money, right? Or they shut off your ability. To your point, you know, you can't go here or there if you don't have X, Y, or Z. Mm. Yeah, it's lack of freedom, isn't it? Complete lack of freedom. It sounds like a horrible Tom Cruise movie. It does. It does. It, it, this feels like an end of the world sci-fi movie, but we're we're in it. It's like Majority Report, <laughs> not Minority <laughs> Majority Report. Uh, yeah, and it, and it is a little scary. So, Tony, how how do you combat that in the UK? Because it sounds like the UK is a little more. I mean, it's a smaller landmass for sure. So I'm wondering if they're, it's just a little easier to manage possibly than something like United States. Plus our philosophical, we're gun toters and freedoms. and You can't see Mark with his fingers in the air. I did finger guns. Like a cartoon character from the 1950s, Yosemite <laughs> Sam. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> so how do you, so what's, what's the next step for the UK in this, in this sense? Is okay. it rallies or? I would hope so. I would hope that we start a revolution i think that's that's what's needed the government just aren't managing whatever is going on they're making all right fucking pig's ear of it and unfortunately it's all of us that are suffering we had the health secretary on uh good morning britain it's a, a morning breakfast show fake crying because someone was receiving the first vaccination it's on youtube it's like what is that all about fake crying fake crying yeah yeah check it out his name's matt hancock uh, on good morning okay. britain yeah so he was crying, fake crying because somebody was getting the vaccine? Yeah, so he was like crying because he was so relieved that the vaccine was out. Oh, like a lot happy tears. Yeah, but he oh. it was oh. fake. It was fake. You could, yeah. Okay. Now, I know I got you. Okay. Yeah, um, I just pulled up Matt Hancock as we're speaking. We're, we're, we'll go down that rabbit hole. Maybe no, we'll do we it. we won't. Um, so, Tony, <laughs> did you really think the podcast would be about this crap? No. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, let me tell you something. I do like a good I, conspiracy. It's funny. I had a gentleman named Daniel on one of my one of the early episodes, and it was right out of George Floyd. And he's a half Jamaican. Uh, he's a biracial uh, gentleman that lives in the UK. Right. And it was the same thing. Like we were thinking about, hey, let's have this fun chat, and it got so serious because you know, right <laughs> that's before what you guys we got do that. that's what you guys do really well, though. You can you you can have serious chats, but keep it fun as well. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. And, and, you know, we, we actually love your content. How do you, how do you make it so presentable and so tight and so beautiful when you present the information to us? I really feel like we're, this is a real bromance, isn't it? You're blowing a lot of steam up my it's, ass. This is great. It's, this is not a joke. <laughs> He's really good at it too. I, huh? I've been wa I watch them and I, trust me, let me put it this way. We just started going back on video and I forgot to hit the microphone on button. So we have two hours of us video with quiet. Oh, I've done that. And it's basically times, like yeah. a, yeah. Cause I don't know what I'm doing, but you've got, need, a, I keep telling you, him we need a checklist, but he doesn't want to have a checklist for the checklist. Oh, okay. As he shakes his head. No at me, <laughs> but you've got, I mean, you've got a really good setup. I, Chris was showing me the um, Instagram, your Instagram earlier. Uh, my setup, it's just a microphone and a laptop. That's all it is. 
You know, like, how do you, how, yeah, it, but it does. I mean, you, it's all synced up with the video. Like I'm, I'm just blown away by that. Cause I have zero of that. Skills. Well, and obviously Tony, your, your video editing skills are, <laughs> they, they're, they look top notch. No, they're, you know? pretty, they're pretty non-existent so i just i, I wow i screen grab the the news stories uh and then edit them in the video editor and then just record the vocals over the top of it there's no script i just talk uh, you know as i see but it, it flows very well and now i'm blowing Good. sunshine up your ass sorry yeah. fuck uh this see what i learned from mark this is not cool I, anyway i i guess the point is i was i was impressed with your videos that's all Thank you that's, very you know, much. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. And that's why I mean, we want to have you on because we're. I'm intrigued with how how did you, how did Michael Jackson become the biggest like one of the more focused? Were you always a fan? Oh, always. How, yeah, always. Okay. Because uh, we we just spoke about our ages, and we're within all of us are within three years of each other. Yeah. Wow. So wow. you're in the middle. Uh, I'm the youngest, and Chris is the oldest. Yeah, great. Thanks. But youngest Old doesn't guy mean jokes. anything really in this case because we're like <laughs> yeah with the apart. maturity level of a nine-year-old between the three of us it appears <laughs> uh so yeah when did i get into mj when i was about uh, what, six i guess uh my mum um let me play with an old record player and uh, she shared some of her vinyls which were j5 jackson five and um yeah really liked those and then got into the thriller album and it just went from there and i must admit at one point especially as a teenager i absolutely idolized michael jackson uh, but I think as you get a little bit older, you kind of realize, you know, I appreciate him more um, rather than idolize. He, you know, he did make mistakes and there, there there are questions around his life, but he did live, leave, he did lead a very unique life. Um, and I don't think we can judge, you know, we weren't in his, in his shoes, so to speak. So we can't judge uh, the decisions that he made. Um, but yeah, I think he was an amazing man and I will continue to highlight the press bias uh, against him. Yeah. And I, I find that interesting too, because to your point, like the idolizing thing, right? Everyone's fallible. So we've all made mistakes. It's hard. It, it's a very big challenge to idolize someone because in that way, then they're perfect. Yeah. Exactly. But, but we all are human. Right. And, and I think the way that you mentioned about ad, admiring him, that's the much more healthy and common sense way. Once again, we just talked about, you know, like you, you're in the camp of common sense. Yeah, exactly. But as a teenager, yeah. you do kind of idolize people, don't you? Yeah, you do. And, and I find that interesting. Could I ask you a question about because of the uh, mainstream media, right? Mm -hmm. In my opinion, the mainstream media has set this narrative about who Michael Jackson is. Yeah. So, we do not trust that because you and I have seen the truth, right? We've seen what it actually is, but versus what they're telling us, right? Mm. So why are we trusting the mainstream media for any other things like political or environmental or COVID. like in the, in the COVID world, right? Like we should be not trusting any of this stuff. Do you trust that stuff? Not at all. No. So you're talking no, about- I don't, like, I don't even watch the news anymore. So you're talking about in general, like as a society, like why do we trust mainstream media? Yes, correct. But yeah, mainstream. And let's be honest, politically, even this recent political run, and I'm, I'm not going to go one, but it's agenda driven. How the heck are the people who know that they lied about Michael Jackson trust what the uh, what they're saying about political parties? How can how can you trust one part of it, but not the other? People are sheep. <laughs> that's, the, that, that's what they it, are. You know, like, you, uh, you, yeah, you work, you have a long day at work. You're absolutely knackered. You just come home, put the TV news on and it's kind of escapism. You don't really you don't want to think about what's going on behind that or what, what the agenda is. You're just letting it wash all over you and taking it in, unfortunately. Yeah. So how, how is it that we got wired slightly differently? What, what happened to us? <laughs> no, yeah, that's a good question, Tony. No what makes you no question idea. things, Tony? Um, yeah. Did you always have growing up? Did you always have a, just a general curiosity, curiosity in general or more skepticism or how did, how, how was your, kind of upbringing in that way yeah i've always been kind of like open um to to different kind of things um definitely not being narrow-minded um you know as a child and as and as an adult but i think you have a responsibility to yourself whether, whether you whether you do believe these things you know as a kid and whatever it doesn't really matter how you're brought up you have a responsibility to yourself as an adult to not believe everything that you're taking in to kind of do your own research and find and find out the truth it's really dangerous to take something from one source and just believe it. But unfortunately, a lot of people do. Yeah. I feel like distract, like 
I, I I spoke about a gentleman that I work with, and he's a he's a genius. He's borderline genius. And I talked to him about something about environment and how pesticides were starting to work to the poles because of the way it evaporates and then and then kind of reconstitutes colder area to the point where it can't evaporate and go away anymore. Right. And he's like, don't tell me that stuff. I don't want to think about it. I'm like, you're a genius. You, right. You're the one who can fix the problem. Why are, why are we, why are we intentionally turning our heads? Right. We're almost like ostriches in a way, but there's comfort in ignorance, isn't there? There Do is. Think? Do you not think? I think there is. I, I agree. 100%. Hmm. Chris, what are your thoughts on that? Well, sir? that's also part of the reason why I stopped watching the news is because I know, and I stopped watching the news um, a while ago before COVID. And it's because I know there's horrible things that happen every single day all over the world. I don't need to be reminded of that. Yeah. So why, why would I, why would I want to keep being, it, it's like, I'm in, I'm, I'm immersed in garbage. Yeah. So I don't, I don't need that. I don't, I want happy things, unicorns and rainbows. You know what I mean? But that's a good For point. Real. That's that's a really good point. It's about deciding what we want to consume and how what we're consuming as entertainment or whatever. It's like food. It's, it's, it's affecting our mind just the same way as food is affecting our body. So, you know, like you, like, like, like you're saying, why take in all this fucking shit? It's not going to do you any good. And you've come to that realization. You're woke. Of course you're woke. That's well, amazing. sure. <laughs> th thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> has, has, has woke gotten kind of a, a little, a little bit of a bad connotation recently with, yeah. in, in the UK? Yeah. <laughs> it's cause it's almost, it's woke to the point where you're actually hurting the initial cause that you were waking up to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it's yeah. trendy now too, right? So yeah, well, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. The word is now trendy. Yeah. And it's been, it's been, I, I don't even know how to describe it where it's, it's almost derogatory and that's not the right word, but no, I think you guys know that. what I'm saying. Really it's overused that. and it's just, it's not as meaningful as it, as it should be. Like, why don't we just calm down, slow down, take a deep breath and think about what we're all doing as a, as a population of this planet, not just, you know, not just, Oh, the go USA or go China or whatever country you're from, but as a human, what are we doing? Because we're all the same. You know, we all pee and fart. Calm the hell down. <laughs> it's going to be okay if we all take care of each other. But humans naturally don't want to do that. You know, survival instincts, et cetera, et cetera. And that's a, so that's a challenge that we face. Chris, you need to be president. That was that was a beautiful speech. That was amazing. Th uh, thank you. Uh, no, sir. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have a food truck. I'm president <laughs> of the food trucks. You'd be the you president have, of the food truck society. Yes. Do you guys have food trucks in the UK? Food trucks. What are food trucks? Uh, it's like a small, a tiny bus that they that people sell food out of, like gourmet tacos or grilled cheese sandwiches or. Uh, how about? Come on. And do they like cook food? Chips. Oh, yes, sir. Fish and chips. Yeah, we have fish and chip vans, and yeah, we have food trucks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh okay, so, yeah. yeah so I guess there may be the food vans trucks. Over there. Did a they they jumped what last five years? They just like blew up in the United States. Yeah. Everybody's right. got a food truck. And they're usually really bad for you. Usually, there's a lot of grease and butter and artery clogging amazingness. Delicious. So yeah. Delicious. Awesome. yeah. I know it's great. That's the whole point. So well, it's funny your, too. Sorry, oh, what are your guys' thoughts about like just going back to Michael Jackson and leaving Neverland? Um, and obviously, you, uh, you, Mark, you were talking about your relationship with that film. What What do you think was the agenda behind that? Because a lot of ignorant people were just soaked up leaving Neverland and taking it as gospel. So, what What was behind that? Do you think? Well, what's interesting is we were we were all adults, like twenty, twenty one, twenty two, when the actual trial was going on, right? So I can I can tell you I have vivid memories of what they were telling us was going on in the trial, which we obviously are finding that that wasn't true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So since then, I've been manipulated. I'm not you know, I and trust me, as I, I like to sing, I was a singer. Michael Jackson thriller is it. It's just such a all the albums are great. And I love Jackson five and all that. But. When I watch that, I'm not going to lie. It just kind of closed the door on him as an adult. It just 
was so it was so he did it. I mean, yeah. it was so Bill Cosby. It was so uh, Aaron Hernandez. It was so, you know, it was such a, a fact that he did these things that it, to me, it seemed undeniable. Right. Hmm. And I, I'll be honest, I stopped. I, I'm not a cancel culture guy, but personally, I will. Right. Like I could not listen to Michael Jackson as an adult. Um, but I could listen to Jackson five because I felt like something happened in his childhood that would have caused that. Right. Or, or contributed to that yeah so you kind of separated them the art from the from the artist in a way but more the age of the artist okay yeah because as a child he was a victim in my opinion okay right because i don't i don't think bad people i think bad people are more created than just born right i i don't think psychopathy or sociopath behavior there are some where it just happened right you're born that way but it's a it's more culturally derived than it is um, you know, just a genetic tick, right? Do you kind of opinion. mean more more along the lines of there are no bad people, it's just bad behavior or bad things that these people are doing? No, no, I believe that you can become, you can be created to be bad, right? Okay, yeah. What nature versus sense. nurture, what you're saying? Yeah, there's a nature versus nurture aspect to it. And, and I have personally seen child abuse and child, child molestation, how it's affected people, that are good people at their core. But that doesn't and also mean that every every victim of child abuse turns into a child abuser. That is absolutely correct. 100%. Yeah, so I'm I don't I'm not like that. It's not yeah. like, oh, you were abused so you must be a bad person. That's not how I see it at all. Um but in this specific case it was one of those things. But then when we look at the news and the thing about the one that got me, there are two things that were really stuck stood out. One was the the accusation about the train station that was years later yeah can can you tell us a little bit about that that one story because that one alone should should kind of you know make the rest of the story crumble yeah i'm not very good with dates but apparently um well during the film uh james safe chuck uh says that he was abused multiple times all over neverland uh bearing in mind that there was like cameras all over neverland it was staffed and all anyway uh so he was abused in this train station i think he, he said he was abused upstairs in the train station but at the time when he's saying he was abused the train station didn't even exist um i think it was like built something like was it three four five years afterwards uh, and then when the fans kind of discovered this uh, all of a sudden he kind of like changes uh, when the abuse happened and actually the abuse carried on uh, into his teenage years uh, which he doesn't mention in leaving neverland or, and i don't think he mentioned it in the original uh, court case either right so that was that was the one for me right that was a big one for me the second one was the part about aj benza and how he was either being fed stories or putting stories out to protect Harvey Weinstein back in 1995. Right. T 25 years ago, Weinstein and that whole organization, Hollywood, had been doing that. Hmm. Like, and now that obviously came to fruition. And we see how truth, how true that was. Right. Yeah. So now I, the whole thing feels like we're just being jerked off. Like I gotta say, we're being manipulated on every jerked around would be more appropriate, sir. Which one? Jerked around. Yeah, jerked not around. Jerked off. Not a good way. Not jerked off. I guess. No, it's definitely bad. <laughs> it's weirdo. <laughs> and then, and then the the last part of that was when was something about was there an Oprah comment about something like you still have to believe the accuser whether it was a Tuesday or Wednesday, and I'm like, wasn't it like two years apart? That's like not a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Hmm. So and obviously she capitalized off of Michael Jackson's interview back in what ninety three was it? Yeah, that made her. Yeah, she she became a global star after that, and then she's just right. all over him and his family. Yeah, and I've got other personal things with uh, with Oprah. It's my opinion that she has some high up opinions about eugenics and things like that. Mm. And Chris and I are going to do a eugenics podcast about it. Okay, cool. And what are your thoughts? Uh, tell us. Tell us about you. I mean, tell us what you're about. Oprah. Are. I think she's a snake. Um, did Did you watch the Leaving Neverland after show with Oprah, where she was in an she had an audience full of child? Uh, of, yeah, of, we watched yeah. that too. Oh. Yeah, and didn't she at one point turn around and say something like, "I mean, I only saw it once, but I'm sure she said something along the lines of, as if you're being abused as a seven year old and someone is touching your penis, you're going to like that.'" I just thought that was absolutely outrageous. 
What? I she said that? that? I don't, it's not even worth listening to again, oh but I don't God. want to even give it credit. But if that was said, that's ridiculous. I don't yeah. remember that. But She was going down the route of kind of like grooming. Um, you know, she was saying that uh, right. her mission has been to kind of uncover the patterns of grooming. But uh, Then why doesn't she focus on the Catholic Church? Exactly. Oh, sorry. I'm exactly. a little bitter about that. No, exactly. I apologize. Yeah. And so, also, did you, oh, so, sorry, I just uh, as a no, please. It, this is this is your show, my friend. Please, as a uh, child abuse victim myself, when I watched Leaving Neverland uh, again, I only saw that once. I could, you, I kind of, I've spoken to other um, survivors, and we kind of get like a, a sixth sense, um, and you could just tell that they're, you could just tell that they're lying, that they're bullshitting. They're not. Ugh, I don't know how to describe it. But do you, do, you, do, you, do you know what I mean? I mean, could you, I certainly could you, do. Could you see yeah. through them? Yeah. Abs- well, the thing is, the, the document, the, okay, the show that is leaving Neverland is designed to play with your emotions. Yeah, definitely. So during that, I was, I, I had already been told that Michael Jackson was guilty, right? Yeah. For all this time. So going in, I'm already leaning in that way. So it didn't, it didn't help. Right. So I, I didn't look for those cues but what i find interesting you mentioned you're you're a victim of child abuse or child molestation yeah okay how many people have we come across that have that are victims of this or have had this in their life and then look at michael jackson and say no yeah. you know that tells me more you know that jess that jess comes up and says i was a victim of this and i don't believe it you are right yeah and we're finding that a very interesting thing so how come people who have actually gone through it are able to see this. I don't know. Maybe it's, I know that I wouldn't be acting the way that they're acting. It just, there's no, they just don't come across as being genuine. When you go through something like that, there's, there's kind of a, a depth of emotion. There's, there's just something there that isn't there with people that haven't got through, gone through that. And when they kind of act it, you, you can just see through it. I'm not articulating that very well, but um, it's kind of, like I said, a bit like a sixth sense. You just pick up on the fact that it's, it's bollocks. Whether, yeah, and I think this... Like, yeah, sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say, whether that's through, like, facial expressions or body language or just the way someone, you know, is sitting, I, I, I don't know. But it just it yeah. did not ring true to me. And working in mental health as well, um, I come into contact, I work with a lot of people the majority of people in mental health as adults they've had something horrific happen to them as a child um and so all of that experience as well it just doesn't ring true leaving neverland just did not ring true yeah i totally understand that so how do how do you take those things that don't smell right taste right feel right how do you take them into the rest of your life outside of say outside of michael jackson how how does that play into other you know, obviously you work in the mental health field. How does that play into other things that you do in your life? Um, that's a good question. Sorry. It really is. I'm like, holy yeah. shit. Wow. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it sounds like you're a champion for people, right? I mean, you, you've gone through some pretty horrific things yourself. Yeah. And now you're here to help and be, be of service to others. Yeah, but it also... Yeah, there is that side of it, but it also helps you as well. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure how it kind of helps, but but it does. Uh, yeah, so certainly. Would but, you say, Tony, that you're just – you pull for the underdog? You're always a fan of the little guy, and you're always going to be there for that person? Uh, yeah, I guess so. But I kind of don't like blowing my own trumpet with that. It, you know, I don't do the job because I want any kind of recognition or anything like that. I do the job because I'm passionate about mental health. I'm passionate about uh, male suicide, for example. I've lost uh, friends through suicide. I've had my own uh, kind of flirtations with suicide. I see how it absolutely devastates families and friends. Um, and I think when you have those kind of experiences, you, you need to do something about it. You can't just you can't just leave it. If it affects your life. It colors the whole of your life. I agreed 100%. And I, I'll speak for the two of us. We both have flirted with it as well. Right. It's just, you know, and it's interesting because we're both, once again, middle-aged white guys, men, whatever. And we, but we've all had this interesting uh, kind of feel, right? Mm. And service seems to be a good way to 
for an outlet to help others and to kind of address and maybe resolve some of the things within ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, so, a, um, I think it's a byproduct of helping other people. You kind of, uh, I mean, I mentioned earlier, like my own mental health issues and I wasn't d- diagnosed until I went into mental health. And I think it was, that was kind of like part of the process. So when I started working in the industry, then I kind of started realizing, Oh yeah, that kind of rings a little bit true for myself. I need to do something about that. How old were you when you, when you got into that industry? Um, well, it was in two, th- I'm not very good at maths. 2011. Was that nine years? 11. Ago? Okay. So nine years ago. So yeah, exactly. 30, 37, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. 38 maybe. Yeah. That's, and, and that's when you realize, I realized mine about in, when I was 40. Wow. You know, it's like that weird midlife crisis kind of thing. Right. Yeah. I, I have other stuff. We've never talked about too much about psychic stuff, but I have psychic premonitions and precognitive visions that happen. It's pretty wow. crazy. Wow. Yeah, it's nuts. Um, but Chris, do you have anything to say about that or anything about the suicide part? Or No. I mean, obviously, Tony's one of us. Tony's one of us. I mean, you're one from, of us, Tony. Yeah. But there's from a lot of, everything he's from but, everything he said in the last four point two minutes. He's one of us. There's a lot of men out there who, you know, who who are, who are like us. But there's also a lot of men who can't speak about it because they're men. Um, I mean, I was right. working with. Isn't a guy. that horrible? Yes, it is. I was working with a guy last week, and he was a young guy. He was in his early twenties. He he couldn't explain what was going on with him, and he couldn't talk about it because he had been conditioned not to talk about his feelings. And it's just trying to you know tease those kind of feelings out. And we need to talk. You know, we need to talk about things. And regarding suicide, if you know anyone that is going through that, or if you think someone is suicidal, talk to them about it. Suicide isn't a dirty word. Um, people need your help if they're going through it. Don't ignore them. Well, now I, now we've got President Christopher Woodsy oh, and, Pre- and and Prime Minister Tony on the other side. What's up? I think I think we're going to have to have some peace accords or something after you guys become. Hopefully, we do not have a gaggle of cunts. <laughs> it's a... Or or fuck twists. Fuck, fuck correct. <laughs> fuck twists. <laughs> and I mean, we echo that one hundred percent. We were actually going to do a suicide. Uh, a podcast at some point would you be interested in joining us if we do something like that yeah definitely yeah okay yeah if we get some research together it's it's really hard to talk about because i i know i've lost at least one or two really close people that you know it i if i you know if i was able to stop but it's like how do you stop right you know there we just have to address the mental portions of that yeah so anything else uh do you want to share about uh for uh, about the podcast or the, about your channel, the podcast, things like that? Um, not really, just that you can find it on YouTube, MJ News Digest and on Twitter. Um, I don't upload as much as I should, um, but I, I hope to get back to uploading a couple of times a week. Excellent. That was one of my questions. Is how often d- were you pretty religious about your YouTube channel like, twice a week? Yeah, pretty much twi- twice a week, sometimes three times a week at the occasional live. Uh, but then like with the job opportunity and various other things that, you know, happen in your private life. Uh, YouTube kind of went off the boiler for a little bit, but I'm back uh, doing it again. And then you started a podcast with Jess recently, right? Yeah, I did. So the podcast, the, the podcast is MJ News Digest, just the audio version, but there's another podcast, which is MJ News Review, which kind of looks at maybe two weeks worth of news and has more of a discussion about it. Uh, but unfortunately, Jess is a very busy woman. So it's trying to get together with Jess and record them together. So there has been at least one, I think, where I've just been doing it myself. But yeah, Jess is still on board and I look forward to doing some more podcasts with her. She's an amazing lady. So you're trying to do one with her every two weeks and one with yourself, just by yourself every week? The original plan was that, but now I think we're okay. looking at doing it like once a month um, for the longer okay. podcast. Yeah. I mean, you, okay. you guys have got a really good schedule. You're just pumping them out. Well, you see. Well, we also, we only live 20 minutes away from each other. And okay. between the two of us, we do come up with too many ideas. And, you know, we go on so many freaking tangents. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and usually both of us have something to say. Yeah. So that's the issue. Yeah. Well, that's what's great about opinion. You know, we're allowed to have them. Like At least until they tell us we can't have them anymore. <laughs> so, Mark, you, didn't, is, you, you kind of didn't ask answer my question. What was the agenda behind leaving Neverland? 
Oh, um, you, you, you kind of you were talking about uh, Harvey Weitzman. Do you think it was to do with that, or I I I would I would attest it's a bigger picture. Uh, Michael Jackson has already been found not innocent or found guilty, however you want to say it, in public opinion, and they're just capitalizing on it. Yeah, it's and it just, isn't it? Because in the court of law, he was found innocent, but public opinion is guilty. Right. Public opinion is guilty. And guess what? It's a money maker, right? Michael Jackson's still a big name, so you can make money off any show about him. Yes. And the truth is, if I was on the losing side, there's two ways you can do it. You can either acquiesce and say, you know what? We were wrong about the way we reported the whole time, or you double down. And double my opinion is they're doubling, they're doubling down. down to save their own face. Oh. And they're hoping that the fickle, distracted people are going to not think about it anymore and it'll go away. So, so like whoever's, whoever's on that side, they're not going to be seen as bad people in, in two, three years. Cause we'll forget about that happening, but, yeah. and it's immediacy they're they're doubling down on what they said to save face. In my opinion, that's just personal opinion. Am I allowed to answer the question? Yes, yes sir. Please do. You're like, no, fuck off. You cannot answer. Uh, when we first started looking at this months ago, I beer Googled who owns HBO. Ooh. It's owned by Time Warner, a massive conglomerate, entertainment conglomerate, right? And I'm a, I love HBO. I love Rome is one of my favorite shows. Obviously, everybody loves Sopranos. You know, the number of shows, stupid Game of Thrones, you know, the number of shows they put out is amazing in 30 years, right? So I'm a big fan of HBO. So I watched Leaving Neverland and I didn't, I'm, I'm like, yeah, it's horrible, these things that they're saying, right? But it's obvious to Tony's question. To me, it's ratings. It was all about money. They they tried to get as many people to watch as possible, and they didn't care about the slandering of a person. And as I told Taj Jackson, they didn't care about the ramifications of what they said to the family of Michael Jackson to Taj and Michael's kids and they just came out with guns blazing regardless of the fact that there were 14 charges against Michael and all of those were found not guilty. Yeah. And that was never mentioned. It was just the word of two people. That's it. it that's the end of the sentence. It was the word of two people. Yeah. Done. It was a one-sided story and that's not my opinion. That is fact. If you watched Leaving Neverland, it's the word of two people. It was not a trial with jurors, et cetera, and lawyers and the court of law and blind justice and all that shit. So to me, to Tony's question, sorry for the rambling, it's it was HBO and Time Warner trying to get ratings and trying to get people to watch HBO. And now, to Mark's point, they're doubling down with stupid Leaving Neverland too. Again, for the ratings grab and for money, not caring about the ramifications of this, uh, I'm going to use the word gimmick. Yeah. Yeah, but why, why would they care? You know, they're making their money. But they don't. Yeah. Right. They you just know, care about money. Yeah. Well, I mean, and it goes into all these things. We talked about woke. Like, how about, how about awakening is way more accurate? No one is 100% woke. Woke is like a state of mind that is complete everyone's always i think we should always be striving to be woke but no one can just be woke speak for yourself man <laughs> i mean yeah. i wake up every morning but <laughs> i think it's, i think we are as humans we are kind of we're waking up um we're waking absolutely up. yeah i just think the term is almost like we've arrived there and we're not there no because we have partial opinions about what everything is right so we we're not 100% woke yet. But I think the the attempt to do it is where we where we make our can anyone ever be because we're always learning. Right. We're always and... trying to improve. We're always trying to get better. And I like the word enlightened. I mean, cuz we're always trying to I I mean, I try to be better tomorrow than I am today, right? But a lot of people aren't. They a lot of people don't give a shit. Right. A lot of people feel they are already there. Right. And I and don't that's think that's danger. possible. Yeah. Because there's always something more to read and something more to learn yeah. and something more – a different perspective, to different way to look at something. Right. So can you truly ever get there? No. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Right. But, and, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. No, I, I agree. And looking at those uh, – I don't know if you're familiar with the Me Too movement, Tony, when we right. had that happen. Yeah. yeah. And 
once again, I, I just want to be clear. There are bad people who do bad things to good people. That is a truth. Okay. Me too. Absolutely had its place. However, when it got bigger, like for example, are you familiar with Anthony Bourdain's wife? Uh, vaguely. O Otavia Buzia. No, I think no. it was her. Okay. So, um, Anthony Bourdain's wife alleged that she's part of me too. She was being abused or being by Anthony Bourdain, not by Anthony, by, I think by Weinstein. I think she was oh. part of the me too. Okay. But she had an affair with a 17 year old oh. and she to get herself out. So she me too, somebody who she, when she claimed she was me too, for example. Right. And Anthony pay Anthony, paid this gentleman off money and then anthony killed himself how long how long after like a few months after if even that hmm. you know it's like these things can be very dangerous if they're not watched closely yeah you know so it's just it's just weird things like that it's 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 not the initial people that are harmed it's the ones who pile on and try to take advantage of those situations would you mean like a cover-up yeah you know i mean that's a simplified that's really what it was it was she was covering well, it up you're not talking about this but other cover-ups, not just this one specifically. Well, how how could I get attention? Oh, I was I was molested too, or I was oh, affected too, right? Okay. So it's it's kind of an attention grab in the in the design. But the actual movement is a great concept, right? There are there have been bad people doing bad things for a long time, and we need to expose those. But we have to be very careful about who we accuse and how we accuse, because a false accusation could undermine the whole movement itself. I agree. Interesting, yeah. I don't know. I'm Definitely. just. I just. My brain. Works Are you just talking great. out of your ass now? Yeah, I think so. Okay, cool. Here, let me put it as back. As long up as it's clear. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, do we have any? I don't think the Me Too movement was kind of like as big over here as it was in America. Um, but yeah, you made some very valid yeah. points, Mark. Yeah, I mean, Me Too started with Weinstein, if my if I if memory serves. Correct. So, Tony, what's your take on Mark's comment seven minutes ago regarding? Weinstein and Michael Jackson in the 90s where people were sp allegedly supposedly planting evidence against Michael to throw the dogs off, off of from Harvey Weinstein yeah that make that makes sense yeah it's not the first time I've heard that I, I, I had heard that before and it's good to hear someone else say that um and are you guys aware of like when Leaving Neverland uh, premiered at Sun Sundance Yes. Okay. So uh, also at the same festival, there was going to be the Harvey White's, is it White's? How do you pronounce Weinstein. it? Weinstein. Weinstein. The Harvey yes. Weinstein documentary. Uh, yes. Yeah. But Leaving Neverland was kind of like uh, shoehorned in at the last minute, um, which was a bit curious. And the heat was taken off Weinstein. And instead, everyone is focusing on Leaving Neverland. Uh, can you remember the Harvey Weinstein documentary? Did you see it? Yes, I did. Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. Yeah, so it was, it was, it was terrible. Yeah. There's definitely something something in that, I think, you know, if you want to talk about conspiracies. Uh, but you So know. you definitely, you agree that, 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 I mean, I, I, we, we can call it whatever you will, but they, it was like the powers that be were deflecting away from Weinstein and onto Michael Jackson. Yeah, definitely. But um, as Mark said, that Michael Jackson being guilty makes a lot of money and it's just going to, this train is just going to keep running. Uh, you know, but it's up to us to do our due diligence and, and get that message out there. And I'm interested in like, both of you talking about how Square One, amazing film, how that uh, swayed your opinion. Did it? How did it change your relationship with Michael Jackson and his music? <clears throat> did you start listening to his music again? Or are you like rediscovering new songs or how did that kind of pan out? Um, it, With me... It didn't really change. I didn't really stop listening to his music either way because I can separate the art from the the person. Okay. Um, kind of like with Kevin Spacey, you know these these horrible things. What horrible um, things? Uh, oh, he Kevin abused. Sorry, he, yeah, Kevin, I'm the actor. Kevin Bacon, sorry. Like, uh, I don't think Kevin Bacon did anything bad, but you know, I don't know. Thank God. So I, I think Kevin Spacey is an amazing actor. And I'm not going to not I, – American Beauty is one of my top ten favorite movies, and I'm still going to watch it. Yeah. He did horrible things, yes, but I'm not going to cancel him because 
I can separate the art from the person. Right. So it, um, to your question about how my my view or my perception of Michael's music changed after watching Square One, it really didn't because I never changed in the first place. But did it make um, you more sympathetic maybe towards Michael Jackson? Oh, well, absolutely, because yeah. it was more – Square One was based on facts and – when they interview, when Danny Wu interviewed two jurors of the trial, I was like, holy shit, because why didn't Leaving Neverland interview two jurors? How did this young man come out of seemingly, from my perception, came out of nowhere and got two jurors from a Michael Jackson trial, but HBO couldn't or didn't or didn't even bother? So yeah. that was seemed crazy to me. Yeah. And the piles of evidence that that were displayed. So th it, it absolutely changed the way that I viewed the media manipulation of the masses again. And that's just another way where the I mean, there's five major corporations that own all of media in the world. And that's horrible in and of itself. Mm -hmm. But it's just another topic where are the media manipulating elections? Probably. Are they manipulating COVID? Probably. I, you know, I don't know, but they manipulated this and it seems obvious that they did. Did that answer your question? Yes. Yeah, that was great. Thank okay. <laughs> and Mark, Mark the, to, to your, Mark's made the point that it definitely, seeing square one definitely changed his view of Michael Jackson's music for sure. Yeah. yeah that's good. Good. As Anything else, Mark? That's good. Well, two things. Uh, the the thing that of which Kevin Bacon is guilty is being from Philadelphia. <laughs> so, <laughs> considering I'm from Philadelphia, I know how trash human beings are from Philadelphia. So. You're lovely, sir. No, um, but I and that's the same thing. I'm struggle with that. Can, are you able to separate the two, uh, Tony? Are you able to separate the artist from the art? Because I, one of my favorite movies is Usual Suspects, and Kevin Spacey. I that's basically. Chris mentioned Kevin Spacey and I flipped him the bird because uh, I got cause, dual birds because he because uh, Kevin Spacey is one of my favorite actors. Yet, if all of those allegations or any of those are true, well, he, he, and he's guilty, he admitted some of them, I yes, believe he admitted some, uh, for example, like the Star Trek Discovery guy uh, yeah. when he was in Broadway at like 14. Something like that. Something like that. I don't know that, for sure. I, I, I have a hard time supporting anyone in that way. I'm wondering if it's me though. Like, should I be able to separate the art from the artist? What was the Netflix show that he was in where he was the president? House of Cards. Yeah. So I loved House of Cards, but when all this came out, I stopped watching House of Cards because, because of Kevin Spacey, but it, it wasn't just about the allegations as well. It was the fact that he, it was the whole gay thing as well, where, you know, everyone knew that he was gay, but he, he said that he wasn't. And then after the allegation, he kind of used the fact that he was gay to try and uh, justify, you know, what he was doing with a 14 year old. It was just a, just a mess. So yeah, I found it hard to, uh, to separate uh, his artistry, I guess, which does that make me yeah. a hypocrite because I didn't do that with Michael Jackson, but maybe I know the truth about Michael Jackson. So I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's a very good point. And I want to be clear. Um, I believe it was Asia Argento was Bourdain's lover, okay. not Octavia. I just, once again, oh, we, not wife, but yeah, not the wife. It was, it was girlfriend. I think it's girlfriend because Octavia, they divorced in 2016. So I think it's Asia Argento. I don't, I try not to dox people or try not, I try to be as accurate as we can be. We're not here to, you know, we're here to look at philosophies and ideas, not individuals. Um, but it's interesting because the cancel culture, like I would never tell someone not to watch or not listen, but for personal use, I would, I take the personal accountability to your point, Tony, I haven't watched a Kevin Spacey, but I love Chris. And I know Chris, I know Chris's favorite movie or one of his favorite movies, American beauty, like he mentioned. And you know, it's, that's his decision to do that. You know, yeah. I wouldn't tell him not to, but for me, I couldn't not do it. And I don't fault you for that, Mark. I mean, if you're, well, I don't that's why think, we're great people. Yeah, in general. And no, I don't. I, I totally, that. I completely understand why you won't watch Usual Suspects. I get it. I I understand completely because I do that with other things. I will like, I'll see something that'll upset me, and I'll go. Psh, I'm not shopping there anymore. 
oh, psh, I'm not going to buy that car because right. something will upset me and I will purposely, consciously not do something to not give my money to somebody or not spend my time with a certain company or a certain whatever. So I understand your the way that your brain is processing this. And I totally respect that. And I have no judgment towards you towards that at all. So I get it. I just look at it differently. That's all. Right. No and I deal. accept, and I certainly accept you for right. how that is. I mean, and, and that's the thing is God damn I, love fest. This is ridiculous. The, well, the three, the three of us being who we are, we kind of, we've always done the vote with our dollar kind of thing. Of course. Right? So in a weird way, it was kind of pre cancel culture. Because individually, we can say, I'm not going to spend my money on this. Yeah. But where cancel culture is gone, it's now you're tweeting a million billion people and telling everyone else not to do it, too. Yeah. And I feel like that's a little uh, controlling, in my opinion. What are your thoughts on that, Tony? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I agree. So. It's also, I, I wish I could tweet a million billion people. That's I know. A, that's a, a million lot. billion. There's only seven billion right that's now. A, we need a million billion. That's a that's a lot of people, dude. <laughs> but, but that's that kind of those kind of tweets do put pressure on a lot of people. Um, you know, well, I just tweet out dog pictures and Legos <laughs> or Lego. 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 Uh, what, so what, what, what are you saying? Leg, 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 what was that? Lego, Lego. like the uh, the snap pieces, the you put little together? tiny toys built oh, okay. in Sweden. Yeah, Chris I, ha thinks, I, ha I have Chris a Lego addiction problem, Tony. Excellent, excellent. Chris likes to think that the plural of Lego is Legos. It is not, sir. Oh. It is Lego. 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 See, I, Lego. I'll, yeah, I'll, Lego. I'll, Lego. I'll, drink, I'll drink margaritas and I'll build Lego. Excellent. Do you buy like the adult <laughs> kits, like the Star Wars uh, and all that? Yes, sir. I just wow. finished the Imperial Star Destroyer and I, uh, it sat in my closet for eight months and then I bought the Millennium Falcon uh, five days ago. How many hours did you put in? I believe it's on the Instagram, on your Instagram, it's, right? On no, your it's on, because I don't have an Instagram. My oh, dogs that's... have an Instagram. That's right. It's on Twitter and the Facebook. The Imperial Star Destroyer, which is three and a half feet long, took me 32 hours, 45 minutes. Wow. Over like, I think it was three, two and a half weeks. I, I you know, I would, I'd work on it for like nine hours one day, and then I would not work, touch it for a week. It's 31 pounds, Tony. It's re goddamn ridiculous. Wow. Does it have like moving parts and lights and stuff like that? It, it does not have moving parts. It does have moving parts, but no lights. The light kits are extra, right. like $59. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, I don't need any lights. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> so, uh, do you have any other hobbies or anything uh, that you do, Tony? Uh, not really. No. Um, no. You just work and work, right? Just, yeah, pretty pretty much work. And and the podcast, that's a, that, that's a good balance. Yeah. And, and you're a key connoisseur. Oh, definitely. Um, but yeah, when I talk to my friends about the uh, MJ podcast or the YouTube channel, they're like, what the fuck are you doing wasting your time on that? But, you know, to me, it's a, it is a bit of a passion, but it's also a balance. When you, you know, when you've got a stressful job, you need something to balance your life. Absolutely. I never thought about it that way before. That's a really good point. It's it's something about the balance. So why would they think that? Why would they think that's a waste of time? What's their What's their philosophy on it? I haven't really gone into detail with them, but I guess kind of like you're spending time on a celebrity, a dead celebrity. Um, so I think there's a bit of that. Yeah, I, but I but to to the point, the thing that got me about it is the system that told me the wrong thing. I I'm all about, and I mean Chris and I have talked about this is. These systems are in place and we're doing podcast episodes that show where the system rears its ugly head, right? Yeah. We've done it with uh, medical. Uh, we I don't even know if that one's out yet. No, right? pharmaceutical industry. Pharmaceutical industry, but the COVID thing, we've done it on so many different, the Catholic church. Yeah. We've shown where the system of control needs to be looked at. We're not, we're not saying burn everything down. We just want to come up with a better solution to replace it, not just to destroy it if that makes sense but wouldn't it be quicker just to burn everything down start again? chris votes yes on burning everything down <laughs> however mark does not mark tell us why you don't want to burn it down well i it's my opinion that we can we can come up with a replacement system that we can test in a vacuum like beta testing and then have it replace the current system because in my opinion a lack of a system with humanity the way humanity is is very dangerous in my opinion. Oh, good point. Yeah. 
I, 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 that's bullshit. <laughs> like, burn it, burn it down. Well, like the term defund the police, it's, it's catchy, right? It fits on a poster board. But the truth is, oh, you know what's a better poster board than that? Burn it down. Up. Oh, burn it down. <laughs> but defund <laughs> the police is great. But it's like all you're saying is get rid of it. Tony, do, saying, you see, do you know what he's talking about? What, defund the police? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I just want to make okay. sure yeah. you, because that so, is an American okay. vernacular. I went ummy on you. I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> but um, the defund the police is basically just saying strip them of their of their resources. That's not saying let's let's look at how it's being addressed and how it's being spent so we can do it better. Right. It's a much different conversation than just burn it down. And I think with looking at it from a constructive criti critical point of view is much better than a destructive critical point of view. But who is going to beta test this new thing? Like, surely it was yeah. actually the government's, is it? Mark? Well, that's the problem, right? We have elected officials and such. But, I mean, one of the problems in a free society as we are is I think the scale, it's hard to, to uh, have this many people to scale be free, hmm. right? Under one, under one ideal, ideology, ideology, I guess. Mark's point is that in, in the United States, there's 320 million people and they're all individuals with individual thoughts, individual freedoms. How can you move everyone into one direction? Yeah. And the only way to do it is do it like China does it. That's my opinion. I mean, unfortunately, with that comes huge masses of control. Mm. Where I, you lose the American way of life, the, the, the constitution of freedom of this, freedom of that, et cetera. Yeah. We're so. fucked, basically. Yeah, exactly. I think I'm going to move to Canada. <laughs> well, that's the thing is, I mean, you know, one of the most egalitarian is like Sweden, for example. And Sweden, but Sweden has such a small number of people compared, compared. Of course. Right. Yeah. I mean, we're, say they have 10 million people, we're 33 times that size. China's three times the size of us. How could you possibly manage? Uh, it's almost like it's challenging to do it that way. Yeah. And the United States had a really good idea when I, in my opinion, when they first came to fruition was it's beautiful, right? Individual states are individual, but we come together as a, as a country, right? But they are individual groups within that country, which is why can, uh, California shut down, Philadelphia shut down, but Texas, Arizona wide open, right? Yeah. So it's just, it's, it's just kind philosophies. of philosophies. How, how do we get through life, Tony? How do we get through this? This mess? prime minister. <laughs> uh, we need to just have fun. Just have fun with life. Try it. Like, when I was talking earlier about the about uh, you know I'm fucked off with the fact that Christmas has been cancelled. Look at it in a different perspective. Yeah, it's annoying, and I'm not going to be able to do what I want to do, and nor are millions of other people. But there's also people that are a lot worse off, or you know we're not in a kind of you know we're not in war not in world war three although some people could say covid is world war three things can always be a little bit worse i guess i don't know yeah so with that what happens though this is where it gets scary though because we decide that and we're cool with it now the people who put those policies in place go well no one's pushed back no one's fought they've accepted it right to to that yeah. original point yeah. then they're like what next can we do to see if you'll put you know if you'll push back or not yeah, we do need to push back. Yeah, I, I feel like there needs to be a healthy pushback. You know, it's just not, not obviously not violence, right? The one thing, yeah. we're, I'm a constitutionalist, man. I, I believe in peaceably assemble. And right? let, me, let me tell I, you, I'm a lover, not a fighter, as Michael Jackson says. Um, so I wouldn't, burn, yeah, I wouldn't burn places down, but there has to be, yeah, peaceful protest or something more than just peaceful protest, though. Yeah, there needs to be a, an actual movement, an actual result of the protest, right? Yeah. And I wonder how, how do we get to that without it getting violent or getting out of hand? Hmm. That's the question, well, I guess. Tony used the word revolution earlier, but what exactly does that mean, I think, is the big question. And Because I agree that – and I hate to say, oh, we need change. Well, no shit. Everyone knows that. Is there anyone that's happy with – obviously, Tony's not happy with what's going on in the UK. Mark and I are not happy with what's going on in the United States. Okay, well, no shit. That's common. That's We're pro common sense. But how do we get to a, a, a place of where we're all 
being better people and the systems that we do have are not stepping on other people. How do we get have a revolution that's not violent? Mm. I, is that possible? Probably not. Probably not. And maybe that is that's, part of the, the agenda as well. So, yeah, I don't know. But kind I mean, of reminds look, me, do, do you guys remember an old um, TV show called V uh, about like the aliens? Uh, it's our favorite TV. Yeah, of course we know it. V. Sir, Come it on. is our favorite TV show. It has, look, it has Freddy Krueger <laughs> no, in it for no, goodness wait. sakes. Battlestar Galactica is our favorite TV show. That's true. V is like in the top five. Yes. Well, Let's I not get the, carried away. I bought the box set the other day and um, normally I don't buy DVDs or Blu-rays. I, just I told you he was one of us. <laughs> but they, to kind of like, re against the resistance, they, they made these uh, little kind of like pocket uh, resistant groups. Yeah. So yeah, and they, and they did little like hit and run missions, right? Exactly. And they didn't have the internet back then, but we've got the internet now. So <laughs> we can have like Very one, true. Hotels, one in London, one in California, and we can, that's the way to do it. Surely. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering if Twitter is the kind of the, the nonviolent way of doing it. Right. But oh, with everyone talking, no one's listening. Oh yeah. Good you point. know what I mean? It yeah. feels like everyone's and everyone as a human has that individual right to be human and to share and express themselves as long as it's nonviolent. Yes. But when everyone's talking because they've all feel they need to be heard, there's certainly not enough people listening. Yeah. How do we balance the talking and the list? How do we balance that? And how do we culturally maybe like, Hey, you've got two ears and one mouth, right? You should, mm. the ratio should be equivalent. I'm a talker, obviously whoa. way more than I'm a listener. Ears, so I'm guilty mouth. of this. That's whoa. So how do we get how do we get around that? Duct tape, Mark. <laughs> You're gonna duct tape my thumbs together and your freaking mouth. I'm gonna tweet with my nose, sir. Oh God, you, your nose is you hit like seven characters at one time. <laughs> 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 yeah, I fat nosed it. Freaking dork. Um, so Tony, what are your thoughts on that? About just everyone talking and no one listening? Is that part of maybe part of the problem as well? Yeah, definitely. But like you say, how do we get around that? I can't see how. How we can kind of yeah. stop that. And I think that's on ourselves, right? The The whole woke thing is like, I, I would love us to all consciously look at ourselves and how we can be better. But to your point, it's really hard when you're distracted and you've got, you know, the wife and the kids trying to pick up, you know, dinner. And then you've got soccer practice and then you've got band after that. It's football over there, dude, not soccer. Oh, sorry. Football. Football practice. <laughs> My bad. And you stop for tea, not coffee. Ah, are you a are you a football fan, no, uh, Tony? Not at all. No, that's smart too. It's it's funny. I was actually an American football fan for a number of years, and as we've as my life has changed, and as we've started looking at these things, and as Chris and I have had these conversations even prior to the podcasting of this of the conversations, um, I've kind of drifted away from those those tribalistic kind of ideals. Mm -hmm. So is that how this podcast came about? Because you, you two were having these kind of conversations already. Yes, we've been having these conversations for many, many years. Cool. When, uh, 10, 12 years, probably. Yeah, 15, I mean, we I've been here. Chris was my first when I came out here permanently to Arizona. Chris was already living here. This was 2003. So for the last 17, for sure, at least 15 or so years, we've had one week a month one weekend day a month usually like a friday a friday a month and we would sit there and have we'd have conversations that would go five hours wow at Ch stupid chinese food restaurants uh or at my house or my apartment or his house or whatever on a saturday we watched battlestar galactica on his huge wall um and then he had all he slowly over time he started getting the equipment and i said when do we just we should just be having, we should be recording these conversations. You know, yeah. that's, it, it's, it was as simple as that. And we just lowered the hammer. And maybe this is how we can, you know, start changing things by people having these kinds of conversations and get, get, getting together and talking about these kinds of issues. Agreed. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I'm going to be honest. My view of the world isn't everyone's, nor would I ask that I, my personal opinions be adopted as a whole. Like as a societal no, change, your, you have your own opinion. That's the difference. Correct. Yes, yeah, certainly. I would never want to enforce my, the way I view the world because I do see things much differently than just the average bear in many cases. That's not better. 
by any means. It's just different, right? We have different filters mm -hmm. that we have, whether it's genetic or even through our, through our upbringing, through our nurture. Yeah. But not having these conversations, in my opinion, is way more detrimental because we don't even all we do is take a side and then sit harder on that side. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, well, we'd love to have you on any time if you'd ever want to have a conversation. Is there anything else that we can uh, any world problems we can fix like we did all these other problems we did today? I don't know. I think we're, we're, we're quite good where we've <laughs> left it. <laughs> where else can we find you, Tony? Um, on YouTube and Twitter. So MJ News Digest. On on both those, yes, same. Okay, yeah, and, and we'll all, share all, all good, that. All good podcasting platforms and apps. Okay, absolutely, we'll share all that information on the show notes as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, and and uh, we're so glad that it. It's funny because if I was not up at one or two a.m. and had Jess follow me and then me message her thanking her for following us when I had twenty listeners or twenty followers. We, would ne we wouldn't be having this conversation. So wow. in a weird way, just being open to these things has allowed two very, three very complete strangers to get together. And, and that's an amazing thing. That is. There's a lesson there, I think. Absolutely. I, Thanks to Jess, too. Yeah, thank you. And, and, sure and fault, thank really. you to you for coming on and, and sharing your time with us. We know it's we know it's very valuable because you work a full-time job. You've got the podcast. You've got the the. Cha uh, YouTube channel, you work very hard and we admire that. And we're so grateful that you gave us that time. And obviously you've been kind to us. So we're more grateful and thankful to you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks for having me on. I've really, really enjoyed it. Absolutely. Any in, closing arguments, sir? Any closing, closing statements? Be excellent to each other and party on dudes. I agree. Cool. Tony, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Have a great day. And Jake.